domain driven design, at least how I use it, is to ensure a service speaks the language of your domain. So like the language of your service, right? Um, so you need, we need to get this email and this username and we need to ensure it speaks the language of our service. And, um, and that's exactly what this pattern tries to solve, right? So I have a domain folder, which has my domains in there. And I have a package in here called user. So firstly, what we're gonna just create in this package is the user domain. So this would be a struct. Um, this would be what's called like your aggregate root. So it would store object value types, um, which all speak the language of your domain, right? So we would have an ID in here and we'd then have another type called user ID, or in this case, just ID. Um, so you'd have ID as an ID. Um, ooh, uh, what else did we have? We had a email. So again, you'd have a type down here called email. And this would be the email type. Ooh. Uh, and then you would have the other name, which was username as a string, right? So we will just drop that in here. So I'll keep this simple. Obviously you can structure this into different files and make it nice and easy, right? So the idea is simply, is you'd have a method on here called new. So now we've got our new um, factory method here. What we're gonna do, it's actually return a new user aggregate root, right? So we would have ID, it would be a, um, our ID type. We're going to use the just to keep the simple uh, URL new string uh, from Google, and we will have our email. Uh, now we're going to take in an email type here because we've already at this point would have had initialized our object value types. So we'd have a you know username as a username, uh, email, and we can populate username as our username, right? So what follows on from that is we would have like new ID and this would return a um, ID and any error. And this would then take in your primitive value. So you would have ID and that would be as a string this time or we'll call it I um, in this case. So what we'd return is obviously, you know, we're gonna return that as the value type, but this is where your domain logic comes in, right? Um, so what you would have here is you could say with having a new ID and we want to validate that someone's, like say um, we had a method that actually took in an ID and we wanted to validate that it speaks the language of our domain. What you would have in here is like, for example, the UID package, you know, where you could then pass the ID and we would have, you know, valid ID at this point and any error. So we can then check the error of this uh, passing um you know and then you can define domain errors so you could have like you know error invalid id errors.new uh and then invalid id provided something like that um and then that means you can then do something like errors dot um you know errors uh i suppose you could do fmt dot error f you could then wrap the error for example so you would have like this um ah, no, screw it uh, even better one the new method errors that join right so we'd have the error and then we could have error invalid id um you know but this is essentially like your domain rules right so any rule you may have like you might have a rule for example to have like the length of the id must be greater than 10 right and then you can define an error here to say it's not length of 10 um, that sort of thing, right? Um, and then we've got the valid ID here, so we just pass in. Oh, actually, in that case, if it's valid, we can just, you know, we know it's valid, we got it and we can return it. Um, but what you'd then have again is to get it back to a primitive type, you would have i as an ID and you would return it as a string. So in this case here, you'd return string i. Um, and what we do is we'll just very quickly implement this for the other two types. Right, so as you can see now, what we've got is we've got an aggregate root, so this is our user domain, and we've got the object value types of the user domain. So these types basically speak the language of the domain, right? So the idea is any code that needs to, you know, speak the language of your application, so the domain, um, needs to use the factory methods to new up its um, primitive types, so from like an adapter in the ports and adapter pattern, or 
say you just you just have like a struct or a request object and you want to get that into your like you want to have that all validated and have that into your application it would go through all of these object value types and then you would know that all of the uh all the types basically speak the same language as your domain right so to to, to make sense of that we have a service here which was the dummy service i mentioned at the start of the video um what we would do is take the username um that i'm passing in here and we would use user dot new username and we'd pass in uh, the username and of course we have errors right so this is where you know you can check errors and then straight away we know if this is an invalid username we can just return the error right and you can do special logic like if the error is because you would, what you would essentially have right is in your domain you would have like var error name or oh, error name too long right or something like this and you could then you know write the logic for that return the error um and then you could obviously come into your application and you could you know do um uh, and errors you know like just just special logic is what i'm getting at here right so you could do you know user error name too long so if the, if the name is not too long then skip it like this is your this is your domain now having logic tied to it that you can use throughout um, services or business logic if you like um, so I'll tell you what I'm just gonna remove that Ooh. Uh, here we go and what we're gonna do now is just new up the final web one which was the email so I'll just call this um, user email so we don't get naming conflicts and we'll have user dot new email we'll take in the email address and we'll return the error again I should really bind the uh, if error not equal to nil to a key because that obviously, as you know, as a Go developer, is all you type all day, every day. Um, anyway, so we've now got two fields which are valid object value types in our business logic. So uh, what we would now do is take these two fields and come down here and we would use the user dot new user because at this point we have all of the valid object value types of a user, right? So we can now pass in a user uh, name and um, what was it? User email. Uh, so I make sure that I do have a little typo in here. Uh, oh, user name, user email. Oh, okay, I've got them the wrong way around. That makes sense. Uh, like that, right? So now we have a valid user. So we can now call this user an error. Uh, there's not an error here because we already know everything's valid. Um, but at this point, we have a user which is completely valid and um, is a valid like user domain type in our application, right? So at this point onwards, we could um, you know use this for our business logic. We could um, pass to repositories, pass to the database, and we know it's valid data going to it, and so on, right? So uh, I'm going to do another video to kind of talk about how this ties into like a wider, broader pattern with like database adapters and um, that kind of thing, and, and that would be on what's called the ports and adapters pattern, uh, also known as like the hexagonal architecture pattern. Um, but just to finish up here, uh, we're going to extend this just to return a, oh, I already have the food response type here. So that would actually be, you know, obviously sign up response. Um, uh, so we'll return that and the error. And this is, this is kind of the reason for the, um, for the output, right? Oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just return a pointer to it so we can return nil here, nil here. And then we can come down here. So what you can now do is obviously we want to return a response and we want an ID. And as you know, we have u.id.string, right? Because we now can get that back to a primitive type. So what we've got, just to go over this one more time, is we've got a, a DTO, right? Which is a data transfer object, um, which holds primitive fields. Right, so these are just fields that are like transmittable over the wire. Like a, you might have an adapter, like a HTTP adapter. So this would be your HTTP request object, which are just going to be strings because obviously that's all that JSON can store. Or it'd be like an integer or a boolean or date time. Right, basically just normal everyday types. Uh, that your service method would then take in that request, and it would. Um, obviously, I'm not actually using that type. I just noticed, but think of it as that type here. Um, I can't really, you know, trying to save time here, but uh, think of that as that type here. And then as you can see, 
we're then changing the two fields, so username into the user domain, and we would validate any business logic, or any not business logic, but domain logic. So data validation, right? We'd make sure um, the username isn't too long, or it's not empty, or it hasn't got like you know bad characters in it that we don't support in the system, that kind of thing. Um, we then have the exact same thing for an email address, so we'd validate it's an actual email. And then finally, we get to our aggregate root user type, and we can just pass in our object value types into that, um, which at that point, you can return back to primitives. So essentially, um, you know, we want to get uh, request fields to speak our domain language. Um, but that's pretty much it. I hope, obviously, it made some type of sense, this tutorial. Um, it's a little bit all over the place, but... Again, this will make a bit more of um, sense when it gets to the hexagonal architecture videos and the ports and adapters videos. Um, and just as a disclaimer, this is probably an opinionated view on how to do domain-driven design in Go. I'm sure there's loads of other ways to do it, and I'm sure you've probably seen better or if not different ways of doing it. And by all means, hit me in the comments with any um, suggestions of how you think I could improve this domain package. Um, like I say this is just kind of how I've done things and uh, what's worked for me and, and businesses I've worked in. Um, so uh, yeah, leave a like if you've if this has helped you guys, and um, catch you later on.